and uh like so so many blessings that happen i'm just like we're fortunate i feel lucky and that's the thing some people could look at this and be like wow you are really unlucky that all of those events happened to you or other people could be like wow you're really lucky that even though that event happened to you all of these other great things happened to you during it so find a way to Hello beautiful beings of light, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Monica and today's video is titled Count Your Blessings Within Chaos. It feels so good to be making a video again, to be back. It feels like it's been forever and I just want to start off by saying thank you so much to all of my new subscribers. I know it's been over a month, maybe almost two months since my last video, uh, a lot of crazy things have happened that I'm not going to particularly go over in detail in this video. Uh, but just to give a little bit of an update, I, my husband and I almost bought a house, our very first house, got very close to that. Uh, things didn't work out, but for good reasons we saw afterwards. And we recently had a family member that was very, very uh, ill and was in the hospital, well, the intensive care unit for a couple weeks. So we were pretty, you know, busy trying to help uh, this family member and take care of them and stuff. But um, as of right now, I am back. I finally had some time to be able to make a video and edit and all that good stuff. And I noticed that my subscriber count has just kept going up during the time I haven't been uploading any new content. So thank you again so much to all the people who have subscribed to the channel. Uh, that tells me that the messages in the videos that I already have, which I have over a hundred, are still resonating with people, which is amazing. And it keeps me inspired and encouraged and motivated to keep making content for you guys. And also, of course, thank you so much to all of my OG subscribers who have been here from the beginning or who have found me sometime in the last couple years since my channel has started. All right, let's get into this story time video. I was not really sure what to uh, title this video. I just wasn't sure. It was kind of a a very interesting story or, that I wanted to share that happened to me actually over the 4th of July, so not too long ago. And I'm hoping that this video will encourage people to keep their faith in very stressful situations and really see the blessings and the miracles and the synchronicities that can happen within such chaotic situations that come throughout all of our lives at you know some point or another okay so to start this story time what happened was again it was the 4th of July and my husband and I were leaving Michigan upper Michigan where his family is from and he still has some family that lives there so we went there last summer we went there this summer and so we were really ready to leave um, there was a certain situation that was going on that was causing us a tremendous amount of stress and actually kind of putting a strain on our relationship to be honest like we were kind of fighting a lot uh, or at least having a lot of disagreements I don't really like to say fighting and we just knew that we had to physically remove ourselves out of the situation in order to attain some peace like one of my favorite quotes is if it costs you your peace then it costs too much and I I live by that. I'm like, if it's costing me my peace, it's too much and I need to figure out a solution or remove myself entirely from the situation. So that being said, the day that we left, it was kind of spontaneous, happened to be the 4th of July, and we started having major truck issues. And for those of you who don't know, my husband and I, we live full time and travel full time in an RV that is pulled by our truck. It's a fifth wheel. We've been doing that for the last two and a half years. We thought we were gonna buy a house, like I said in the beginning, uh, for a part-time living uh, during the summer, and then we were gonna still part-time RV the rest of the year, but we decided not to do that as of yet. And so we've been having quite a few issues with the truck since we bought it two and a half years ago. It's used, 
uh, it's, it's a diesel truck and it got really frustrating <laughs> for me, especially because I'm the one when my husband's working, I do all of the errands and I do all of the taking care of uh, the maintenance of the truck and things like that. So I'm always doing oil changes pretty frequently since we travel a lot. So I was getting really frustrated because um, the same issue kept popping up that nobody, no mechanic in any part of the country we've been to was able to fix or even figure out what the problem actually was. And we had spent, well, luckily we had insurance that spent like thousands of dollars to fix this one issue uh, just a few months ago last year. I think it was in September. And then the issue came back again. And it was as we were pulling the RV down the road, trying to get like, I think we were trying to drive about three hours that day. I don't know how many miles that equated to, but we were trying to put some distance behind us and the situation. And so as we were driving, we kept getting this error message on the truck saying engine power reduced. And we know from experience when that happened before that the truck won't go above a certain mile per hour. And it can be very dangerous if you're going super slow, especially on a highway, which we actually were on a highway. But in Michigan, if you haven't been to Michigan, or at least upper Michigan, they don't have like the typical highways you see in most states. It's just like one lane each way. And there's usually nothing but like lots of trees, like lots of forest on either side. And I would say they're typically not too, too busy, but they can still be kind of busy. So when this happened, we pulled over to the side of the road. We turned off the truck because in the past this has worked where uh, we would use our code reader and maybe clear the code, wait a few minutes, try again. And sometimes it wouldn't pop back up and the truck would just work fine. This day, it was not having it. It was the worst issue we had had so far. And... What happened was my husband was driving and he would drive about like a few miles and then the error message, low engine power reduced or something would come back on and we have to pull over again and stop and wait. And so then it even got down to where it was like every two miles and then every one mile that we kept having to pull over. So we were basically limping along. And so at that point we had decided to look for a RV campground that was nearby that we could get to before we were going to go to our actual destination where we already had a campground reserved. And so we found one that was only a few miles away and it was only going to be like a 15 minute drive or something. And they were about to close and we asked if we could still come there and uh, get a site. And luckily they had one site left because on the 4th of July and all holidays, typically, especially during the summer, RV campgrounds are usually just booked like months in advance. Sometimes it could be a year in advance, depending on the location. So we felt very fortunate that they had one spot left that would fit our RV and it wasn't too far away. But unfortunately, the truck did not make it. We It took us about three hours to go, I want to say it was like 23 minutes from where we had started. So we were very very scared and anxious, didn't know what we were going to do. It was the 4th of July. That means all mechanic places are closed. All shops are closed. Everything is virtually closed, right? I mean, maybe some grocery stores, I think, were open, but that was about it. And at one point, we had stopped for a while because the truck was overheating really, really bad, like to the max it could overheat, according to the gauge. And we opened the hood and like not smoke, but just like a lot of heat was rising out and it was just very hot. And so as we were sitting here, I was like Googling, researching what to do and YouTubing videos and couldn't figure out anything that would be a temporary solution to get us to the campground, which at that point I think was only like three miles away at this point. And so as we were stopped on the side of the road for about half an hour, I had asked my angels, um, my spiritual belief is I believe in angels. I believe that all of us have guardian angels and that all of us have spirit guides. And so I asked my, my angels for help. I was like, please send us somebody who can help us. Because at this point, we didn't know how, 
I mean, it wasn't really okay for us to just stay on the side of a highway. And we couldn't stay in the RV on the side of the highway. It wasn't level enough. And, you know, we couldn't put out our slides where we could really get in. And it's really difficult, I think, or it could be challenging to find a, uh, a tow truck that can tow not only our truck, but also our RV at the same time. It has a very um, specific hitch to it. And also, again, this is 4th of July, so not as many people are working. So I thought we were going to have to spend the night in the truck and then hope for the next day that when things were open, that somebody could help us. But just in case I had surrendered to the situation, I was like, there's nothing I feel like I can do right now. I am surrendering control. I'm asking for help from the universe, from my angels. Please send us somebody who can help us right now. And maybe about 15 minutes later, this man from across the street shows up and he asks us if we need help. And here was the first blessing or synchronicity, whatever you want to call it. It was just so cool because, like I said, everything is closed on this holiday, except this man was working at a fireworks tent, like a little tent shop that they had open, you know, for fireworks for the 4th of July. One of the only things that were open that we passed. And so we were directly across from him um, on the road. And he came over and he was like, do you guys need help? Like, I saw you back there stopped for a while and then you stopped up here. And he was like, I'm a mechanic. My shop's closed right now, but it's down the road. Um, Maybe I can see if I can help you guys, you know, if I can see something very obvious. And so him and my husband were talking and looking at under the hood. And luckily we had some tools that we were able to get access to that were underneath the RV, just simple things like a screwdriver that he didn't have with him. And he spent about, I want to say, 10 minutes poking around, trying to figure out what was wrong. He didn't have his professional code reader to see what the actual error was and if there was something he could do to fix it. But instead, uh, since he couldn't do anything to help us with the truck, he said, if we're able to drive it even um, a little bit further, he had a, or actually his parents owned a lodge like a little hotel that was just around the corner, excuse me, that was just around the corner from where we uh, were stopped with the truck. And um, at at the point where we were stopped, we tried to go further or we tried to, we turned on the truck and we tried to go forward, but we literally weren't getting any acceleration and was getting another error code that we had never seen before. So we weren't sure if we were going to be able to just kind of coast to this spot at the lodge around the corner, but he walked with my husband, showed him where it was. Oh, before that, his father was at the fireworks tent too because he owned that as well. And so he was like, oh, my dad's a really nice guy. Like we can go over and ask him. I'm sure he'll let you guys park in the parking lot for a few days until you, you know, get your truck fixed. And so my husband went over across the street to the fireworks tent, talked to his dad. And he was like, yeah, you can totally stay there if you know, if you can make it. And uh, (laughs) this was another miracle that happened was that, like I said, we weren't getting any acceleration. That means we were pushing on the gas and the truck was just coasting uh, because I think we're maybe a little bit on the hill, but we're like, we're going to try to make it. (laughs) And so my husband, brave, like super courageous, turned on the truck, waited till the traffic was pretty clear on both sides. And then we barely at five miles per hour max is all the truck would let us do because when it gets into this overheated mode and with the low engine power reduced, it does that. So it doesn't hurt the engine more. Like it protects the engine by not letting us drive it more, but at five miles per hour, he was able to cross like, uh, to both lanes of the highway straight across, go down this little back road that was behind a bank. Then we turned left, that was around the corner, and that was the lodge, we could see it. And it was, they had this huge parking lot that was, uh, what do you call it, like gravel, like little rocks, um, separate from the asphalt parking lot for their actual customers, because sometimes they have people like who drive semis who need a place to stay, they park their semi trucks in this area. Uh, Luckily, that whole parking lot area was completely clear. There was no one there. 
And we were strategizing like how we were going to position the RV because they said it was best if we had backed in. That way we could pull out, especially if people were parked around us. And so we literally pulled in, just barely getting off the street. And I kid you not, as soon as we barely get off the street and we're in this parking lot of this lodge, the truck completely dies, completely. Like we try to turn it on, it'll start for like five seconds and then it would shut off again and we couldn't move it. <laughs> it was so cool though, because I just like, I was almost in disbelief that we just barely, barely made it to this spot. And that this person had came and all of, all of these synchronicities, like I said, like a lot of people will call these just coincidences. I don't believe in coincidences. These are synchronicities that were meant to happen the way that they happen. And especially with asking for help because we have free will by me asking the universe, my angels, please help us. Then it's like I allowed that energy of help to come in. And then I let go of, like I said, I surrendered to the situation and wasn't resistant to it and just let things flow naturally. All right, so we're there and uh, fortunately we were able to unhook our truck, like unhitch it from the RV. That way we were able to put the stabilizers down, get it level, put our slides out so we could actually fully uh, use it like it was fully functional. And yeah, it was just it was just crazy. Um, I'm trying to think. There were so many things that happened. I had to write them down. Um, one moment. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay. So when we parked just a few minutes after parking, the same guy who had asked us if we needed help, who was a mechanic, he came back and he brought his professional code reader and he was trying to diagnose what was wrong with the truck, but it wasn't working for some reason. We couldn't figure it out. And let me tell you, if you've never been to like upper Michigan or even upper Wisconsin, like the Midwest, people are so freaking nice like they are just the kindest like salt of the earth people they're so down the earth so generous so kind it blows my mind like i've i've experienced a lot of generosity and I've, a lot of kindness a lot of help in my life in different areas of the of the u.s that i've lived i've traveled and lived a lot of places in the united states but particularly in this area of the country, it's like, it's very uh, concentrated with the amount of people who are just so sweet and generous. Like the way that they treat us as strangers, I can't even imagine like how they must treat their own friends and family. Like, it's just, it's just so cool. <laughs> so anyways, he comes back, he, can't, he, he, he couldn't figure out what was wrong. And he looked at us really sad and he was like, I'm so sorry. I can't help you with the truck. Like, I really want to be able to help you. And I looked at him and I was like, it's okay. You helped us so much already by offering us a place to stay, a place to park our RV that's safe off the highway. Like, we are so, so grateful. Thank you. And so he took off and... The crazy thing is, too, is that they didn't even charge us like they didn't charge us any money to park in their parking lot. They typically do not have RVs just park there. They're not an RV park. They're a lodge. Uh, let me see what else. So the next blessing slash synchronicity was that where we had broken down, where the truck died and wouldn't move, in that lodge, it was a very, very tiny town that we were not familiar with at all. And there wasn't a whole lot there, like, at, at all, at all. And um, we just happened to be only three minutes away from a diesel truck repair shop. Now, if you don't have diesel, you may not understand how difficult it can be to get it worked on. It's a very specialized thing, I guess, in the mechanic world. And I've called a lot of places uh, where mechanics will not even look at, at a diesel if there's a problem like that. Like they'll do oil changes and stuff like that, but they won't touch anything else because it's just too, 
I don't know, too complex, maybe it's too much of a liability. I don't know the exact reasons. So that is another frustrating thing when it comes to traveling and trying to find mechanics for a diesel truck. And um, even Chevrolet, because we have a Chevy truck, they couldn't even fix this problem that we were having uh, because it came back again, right? So I was so grateful that we were just three minutes away from a diesel truck shop. So we had made plans to call them in the morning uh, the next day and see if they if we could get it towed there if they had time to look at it. So the next day comes, I call as soon as I see that it's open and the person isn't there yet who can help me. So I have to wait for them to call me back. I was getting really nervous and anxious because I've had a lot of bad customer service in my life where people just are flaky and don't get back to you. So that was like on my mind because I was, we were starting to panic a little bit because at this point, like we had planned to dump all of our RV tanks when we got to the campground that we were heading to, which means that um, with RVing, we have three tanks. Like we have a, a gray water tank, which goes to our kitchen sink, one gray water tank that goes to our bathroom sink and our shower. And then we have one black tank, which goes to our toilet. And these tanks were starting to get really full, which means we couldn't live fully in, in the RV without having these facilities. It's just, it doesn't work. So when I was on the phone with this mechanic, I was almost on the verge of tears. I was like, look, we, we broke down here and these people were really nice, but we don't want to outstay our welcome that they're letting us park here. And we were going to get to a campground so we could dump our tanks and they're filling up and I don't know what to do. Can you get us in? And although he basically said that he was overbooked and understaffed, he was making us a priority because this was considered an emergency situation. So I was so, so happy about that. And he kind of went above and beyond. Like he was super empathetic about our situation. He was like, uh, I don't know. He offered a few solutions. He offered to have his brother call his brother and see if he could um, move our RV, like tow it to the campground that was just three miles away. Uh, he also offered... Uh, I don't know. He offered a few things. He offered to call. There wasn't a Chevrolet dealer in town. He offered to call Ford, the Ford dealership that was um, nearby and see if he could get us a rental car because typically they don't do that unless you're a Ford customer. Right. I guess that would make sense. And he offered to call the tow truck companies because there was only a couple and see if he could get someone to come out right away. And he was able to get one person who came out, uh, but he was like, unfortunately, they have a really old tow truck that's like from the 80s that doesn't support all truck frames. So if the dimensions are right, if it will fit, he will tow us. So that was the first option. And fortunately, when he came out, our truck did fit and it was within minutes. And so my husband went with him to the mechanic shop. That was just like I said, three minutes away. And from there, my husband spent part of the day, like a few hours with the mechanic who was really friendly and informative and um, told him all of the things that he could do, what was wrong. He had my husband in the shop with the mechanics and they were all talking to him. And it's I really felt like he was trying to give us the best deal. He even offered to try to talk to the Chevy dealership that was like half an hour away to accept us sooner because we had called them and it was going to be like a week before they could get us in, which was not going to work uh, because he didn't want to void any warranty work uh, because we had warranty work done with Chevrolet in the past or um, he just wanted us to have, you know, the best options and stuff. And it was a little pricey. His, his prices were pricey, but he really did the best to work with us to try to save us a good amount of money, um, including with the tow truck. <laughs> he was able to save us some money. Uh, they were just like so friendly. My husband was sitting with all the mechanics in their break room or their break area when they went on lunch and they were eating and my husband didn't have any food and they offered him this burger that they had uh, extra or something of food. So just super, super nice people. But one thing I forgot too is that the owner's wife of the lodge, like my husband had only talked to the husband but um, had not talked to the wife and I hadn't either. But she came over when she saw the tow truck there and she was like, you know, if you guys need anything, like you can use our bathroom on site because 
they had a laundromat that they owned that was attached to the lodge and it was public for everyone but they had one bathroom in there because again our tanks were filling up so we couldn't we couldn't use our bathroom fully um, after a couple like after a day or so so every time I had to use the restroom we went to their bathroom which was just like a minute walk she offered um, us to use their dumpsters because you know we have trash and we have to get rid of it somehow uh, so fortunately we were able to walk that over there. She offered their hose spigot uh, so that we could put water into our tank so that we could use it to, you know, drink and to uh, wash our dishes and all of that stuff. And then the last thing I think she offered was for us to use a shower in one of the rooms for like a $12 fee. Uh, she said that she would let us into an empty room, let us shower, and then she would come back and clean it afterwards. And what I came to find out was this woman, uh, the owner's wife, she was an older lady, maybe in like her 50s, late 50s, early 60s. And there were like, if I had to estimate, maybe 12 rooms. Sorry guys, uh, it's really windy where I am and it's too hot, I think, to have the windows up. So it might be really windy that you hear in the background. Uh, so anyways, she had about maybe 12 rooms and she was literally the only person working there. Like she was doing all the reservations. She was doing all of the help, uh, front desk help stuff. She was cleaning the laundry room and she cleaned all of the rooms by herself. So I was like, wow, I'd be happy to pay that $12 fee for a shower. You know, it's not a big deal. Um, and plus they had been so nice to let us stay for free anyways. We ended up being there only, I want to say a couple of days, maybe three nights and a couple of days total. And we did use the shower once and she ended up not even charging us at all, like nothing. She was just like, oh, go ahead. Cause she had already cleaned it. I think once after the former people had a uh, guest had left, let us both go in, use the shower. And then she went and cleaned it again. So these people definitely weren't money hungry. And like I said, she was doing all of this by herself. So she was being super generous. And it turns out what we found out, and this is another synchronicity. Uh, let me back up a little bit. So when the, the son came over, the mechanic came over to the truck when we were broken down in front of the fireworks stand. As he was walking over, my husband told me, he was like, I think we went to high school together. And I was like, oh, wow, like that would be a cool synchronicity, right? And so when he came over, I said, oh, my husband thinks that you guys went to high school together. And then my husband was like, wait, I'm not sure. Or maybe it wasn't him. It looked like someone else. And so we just let it go. But then when we talked to the, the wife, his mom, <laughs> the other owner who was working there by herself, she said that my husband looks familiar. And she asked, she was like, oh, is your last name, you know, this and blah, blah, blah. And like, was your mom, I knew your mom and all of this stuff. And we were just like, whoa, she knew like so much about him, but she, he didn't recognize her really. But it had been some years. I mean, my husband's almost, or just turned 34. So it's been a while since he was in high school. And uh, she was like, yeah, my daughter, so-and-so used to uh, be friends with you, one of your sisters, one of my husband's sisters. So they knew each other that way. They came from the same small town in Michigan. We were now in a small town in Wisconsin, not too far away, like half an hour away. Uh, and here they were, oh, they own these businesses and they just happened to be the ones that we connected with when we needed help. So she was like more than happy to help us. And I think I offered, yeah, I did actually try to offer her money to stay in the parking lot with our RV. And she was like, she wouldn't take it. And she was like, it's not your fault you broke down, you know? And I was thinking, yeah, but it's not your fault either. <laughs> But either way, I'll just, I'll just accept the blessings. I'll just, I won't, what do they say? Look a gift horse in the mouth or whatever. I'll just accept, you know, the gift. So it was nice. <laughs> so continuing on um, with the mechanic story with um, the truck, my husband was still at the mechanics shop for, like I said, a few hours talking to mechanics. And then he, what happened? Uh, the main guy that he talked to, I think the boss, he offered to drive my husband back during his lunch break, even though it wasn't that far of a walk, like I said, it was only three minutes away by car uh, and there was a trail to get there, an ATV trail, but he was so nice. He like 
let, uh, took him home, and uh, before he went home, he stopped by the nearest RV park and showed him around where it was in case he wanted to have his brother tow us to the RV park, depending on how long it would take the truck to get fixed. Uh, so that was cool, and he came back. And that same, I think it was that same day, we went to a grocery store that was in walking distance. It was probably like a five or six minute walk. And uh, fortunately enough to the day that we broke down, I think I went grocery shopping the night before. So we already had a ton of groceries, but um, it was nice to be able to walk and get some few additional things that um, we wanted that maybe I forgot or just some comfort food is really <laughs> what we went for. Um, so I was just amazed. I was like, we have everything almost as if we were in an RV park with full hookups and amenities, uh, with what they offered with the bathroom and the showers and, and the dumpster and everything and the water. And then we had a grocery store that was so close. And then we had, uh, what was the other thing? We had a laundromat that was on site. It just, it just all played out so perfectly. And I just could not express enough gratitude to my angels and to the universe for all of these blessings and synchronicities that were coming to us because it was just so many that I literally, like I said, I had to write them down. I couldn't believe it. I was forgetting them. There was so much information coming in that um, I didn't want to forget all of it. So yeah, I'm back, sorry. <laughs> uh, storage got full on my phone, so I had to delete some uh, old videos and start again, or uh, record again. But um, anyways, yeah, that was pretty much the story uh, that I wanted to share with you guys. It just, like I said, it's just, it's completely mind blowing for me. I've had a lot of synchronicities in my life, but not usually so many that are concentrated in such a short amount of time, because this was like a 48 hour period that all of this was happening. And, um, and then most importantly too, this diesel place uh, was able to fix, it seems like finally fix this issue we've been having with the truck for so long now that no one else could fix, including the Chevrolet dealership. And it wasn't nearly as expensive as we thought it was going to be. It was actually a very reasonable price and they were able to get it done within a couple days, even though again, they were overbooked and understaffed. So now we are back to full-time traveling right now. We are in, uh, Bismarck, North Dakota, which we've never been to before. Apparently it's the most, or no, it's the least visited state of all of the 50 states, but so far I really like it. It's really nice. So it was, a, um, it was a good break after all the stressful events that kind of happened, uh, up until that point. So yeah, basically, like I said, I hope this video has helped at least someone feel a little bit more confident that their their situation is going to be resolved in the best way possible. I know we go through these things that can be very frightening, that can cause us a lot of stress and anxiety, depression, and think that it's going to be like that forever and that we're completely alone and no one's going to help us and um, we just don't see a way out. And I know this isn't a very extreme example of something like that but it is um, a smaller example that I think still was a great teaching lesson even for me to remember that I, I am always divinely guided and supported just as I believe everybody else is. And one of the differences with this, if it happened to somebody else who didn't think this way, they might just see themselves as a victim, like, oh my gosh, like, I can't believe this happened to me. Why did my truck have to break down again? Why does it have to cost me more money? Why did it have to be on a day where it's a holiday and everything's closed? And, and why couldn't I just make it that extra three miles to the park? And why did I have to, uh, have to be vulnerable and let people help me? And I, I don't want to be helped. I want to do everything myself because I can be one of those people. <laughs> That's why I had to surrender to the to the blessings and the gifts, like I said. Uh, even a couple people that we talked to who were staying at the lodge, um, one person that when I was doing laundry asked me, like, are you from here? Or are you traveling through? Or do you live here now? And I was like, well, I told her the story, you know, our truck broke down and then we met these nice people who we actually kind of knew and they let us stay here. Uh, and as I was telling the story, the lady was just like, oh, you poor, poor thing. Oh, my goodness. I'm so sorry. That's so terrible. And I'm thinking, what do you mean it's terrible? This is great. This is one of the best situations that could have happened because, you know, at least <laughs> we broke down in a really good spot. We could It could have been 
far worse and, and more challenging had we broken down anywhere else in the country at any other time. And uh, like so, so many blessings that happen. I'm just like, we're fortunate. I feel lucky. And that's the thing. Some people could look at this and be like, wow, you are really unlucky that all of those events happened to you. Or other people could be like, wow, you're really lucky that even though that event happened to you, all of these other great things happened to you during it. And hey, now you finally have the truck fixed. This is what it took. You were in the right spot and the right place at the right time, which is how I feel. Because we talked to another person who was like feeling so sorry for us. And I was like, no, this is great. <laughs> they probably, I think they thought I was a little bit like, you know, out of my mind, just like, what do you mean? This is great. <laughs> I'm like, trust me, it's great. We're taken care of. It's all good. So I hope you enjoyed this video today, at least. Um, if you didn't learn anything, hopefully it was somewhat interesting or entertaining. And uh, I will be having more videos at some point. I don't want to promise anything, but I do have some ideas, uh, some topics that I really want to talk about, including one that I'm really excited to talk about, which is going to be about, uh, what's it called? It's like quantum physics, quantum jumping or quantum leaping and uh, the Nelson, no, not Nelson, the Mandela effect, which I have never talked about on this channel, but I find it so fascinating and I've had my own experiences with synchronicities with the Mandela effect. So uh, if you're not subscribed and you want to learn about that, uh, make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell, like this video if you liked it and leave a comment if you want to chat because I always love talking to you guys and hearing your experiences. All right, I hope you guys have a great day or night. Thank you so much for watching, and I will hope to see you in my next video, as always. Peace, love, and light.